Hi ladies. Well, here we are in September and we couldn't get together for our business meeting last week. So the executive decided that we would send an email for each uh, program, the months we normally have a program. And I thought if I'm sending an email, why don't I just drop in and have a little visit? So our program for this month would be pin cushions. Now, don't change the channel. I know, I know. We all have them. We all use them. We've all made them. But I'm just going to talk about them a bit and just remind you how easy they are to make, how creative and inventive you can be. And let's see what we can come up with. Now, the first one that I remember ever have owning, and I'm sure everybody else, is the Forever Tomato. Um that comes with a lot of the um, introductory quilting kits and whatnot. So I, I'm sure every household has at least one of these. We didn't make it. I didn't make it, but you certainly can. Now, the next one I'm going to talk about is as simple as can be, two circles sewn together. I put some embroidery thread around just to make a different design. Looks like a flower. And the button that I sewed in the middle, for me, it's useful because I tend to take my hand sewing pin needles and stick them in pin cushion. Then later on I can't find them among the pins. So if I put a button there, I put a pin in just to show, but if I put a button there, then I put my needle in the buttonhole and it's exactly where it should be when I need it. Another one is just a plain rectangle filled with polyfill and on the back I have hook and loop it's called. To me it's Velcro, but hook and loop. And I put a similar hook and loop the other side on my sewing machine so it sits there uh, at my fingertips while I'm sewing. Now if you don't want to put the um, strip on your sewing machine, sew a piece of elastic in this seam while you're sewing and make sure it's long enough. Put it around the throat of your machine and hand sew the elastic at the other end. Then you're not having to remember where you put your pin cushion. It's always there when you're moving along. Um, lately I found people are using dishes a lot and decorating dishes and, and that's a great idea. For example, the, um, um, oh, the egg, egg cup <laughs> is a perfect size. It's tiny if you just want a little one. Um, or similar to the cup and saucer idea that we made a few years ago to go in the uh, lunchroom at our quilt shop. You have your pin cushion on the, in the cup and some sewing ideas around the outside. Or another cute one is to make a cactus. This is just used a felt and I used my straight pins in a certain pattern so it would look like the little buds on the cactus. Now, um, if you have a small dish or the saucer of a cup and don't have the cup anymore, you can glue a little dollar store magnet to the bottom and the pins will um, just grab onto the, go towards the magnet on your dish. So you have an idea that way without sewing. Um, of course, we have lots of animals and the chicken is one common one and one that most of us have or have had. My little guy is getting so old, I'm going to have to make him a bigger brother. And I really like these. They're cute and certainly hold lots of pins. We then go to lots of farmyard animals and, and uh, birds sitting in a nest. They can be pin cushions. Just, there's no end to... Um, the ideas, whatever kind of um, fruit or vegetable or food, animals, furniture, whatever you can think of. Um, another one you don't have to make is last September we were talking about things that um, you don't have to buy specifically from the uh, quilt store is your pool noodle. If you just cut a piece at the end of your pool noodle, it's small if you have just to carry around and lightweight. Or another one that you can buy, and this is wonderful, even though it's not made, uh, handmade, is the magnetic pin holder. It really does grab them when you 
they they really just grab on for that one. Now, we've had lots of ideas for pin cushions. I put some ideas on um, on the email, but there are hundreds. If you put pin cushions in the Google bar, uh, you'll be there for several days. Just do it before the storm comes because if we don't have any power, you won't be able to avail to it. But I'm thinking just in time for the storm, why don't you pull out your uh, all your patterns and your quilting books? Well, not all of them. That would take you forever. Your quilting books and look through and find an idea for a pincushion that maybe you were thinking about making and never did get around to doing it. More and more we're using clips, quilting clips, along with the pins. So I have included a pattern for a wristband clip holder. It's just a piece of felt, certain length, fold it in half twist it around and around, you glue it to the weight, uh, wristband, and your clips just go on and there they are ready for you to use. That's really handy. And because clips are fairly new for being used for quilting, we don't have a lot of ideas for holding them yet. I know we have little bags and, and, um, and dishes and whatnot, but it's kind of handy to have one right there so we won't have to look around for it. Another one I thought was kind of cute for clips is your pie. Now the the uh, I think that's this is a great idea because the filling of the pie is great for your pins, while the crust of the pie holds your clips. So you have a two in one there, which is even better. And because you're often using both when you, you normally don't just use the clips on their own, you're usually using both. So it's good to have something that will hold both of them. Now the pattern shows it in a little pie plate. I pie plate I have is a little too big. I never was a good baker. So um, I thought, well, if I had a smaller one, that really does look nice. However, I would weigh down my pie plate a little. I would, I would glue something to it and then glue the pie in there. Otherwise, it's pretty tip, tippy and, and we'll move around some. The last one I have, and I think this is kind of neat. I was making a cell phone holder because I don't use my phone a lot for talking on. I use it for texting and I use it for looking up YouTube, which is one of my favorite sites. And therefore, if I'm looking up YouTube and I want it near me, or this could hold a tablet if you made it bigger. Um, if I'm looking up something on YouTube, I can put my phone here and have it running and stop it and work along with it. So I just stop and start. It's pretty handy. And while I was making it, I thought, well, this is neat. Look at this, it's polyfill. Here's the perfect pin cushion. So I made one for the sewing area. It can hold my cell phone. I have a pin cushion right there. Now you do put a smaller, a uh, little smaller um, a bag inside, not a bag. You make a little, yeah, you make a little bag and put the smaller bag inside with weights in it just to give it sturdiness, just to hold it down. But then the rep, it's completely surrounded by polyfill folks, so it's not going to hurt your needles or your pins. But I just thought it was great for having a pin cushion. That's only a few ideas. There are many, many more. Um, so I thought I would just throw it out there. There's a couple of things that I was thinking about. Why don't you hit YouTube or the Internet or your magazines because we don't have power. That's where you're going to have to go. And make a couple. Now, say take a picture of them because before our next meeting in October, I'm planning on getting the pictures of them all and displaying them. And who knows, maybe we'll be meeting in October. If not, we'll have another little visit this way. And therefore, enjoy your make your pin cushion making or pin cushion construction or whatever you're going to call it and let your creative juices flow and have fun. See you next month.